for a long time in Kenya, the way to make a billion very fast, to become a billionaire, was to become a political asset without joining politics. How do you do this? You find a way to support the government in power very publicly. And especially if you come from an opposition area, your billions of shillings and even dollars is assured. And if you're already in big business, yeah, the only way to go is to support the government in power. When you support the government in power, you are safe. That's how it has always been. You are safe from, from prosecution. Yeah, of course, already you have the contracts and tenders tied up. You will get them just like that. But in case somebody wants to follow you from corruption, you become untouchable. Well, it seems that things have changed and they have changed very dramatically. This becomes very clear when one takes a closer look at the background of former PSE Youth and Gender Affairs, Lilian Omolo. Actually, Lilian Mbogo Omolo. Now, Lilian is currently married to a Mr. Dick Oruko Oneko. Yes, the name Omolo is not there because she still refers to herself as Lilian Omolo, but this is from her previous marriage where she had three children. Yeah, the eldest is believed to be around 21 years old. But several multiple sources say that that first husband never paid dowry. But her current husband, yeah, Dick Oruko Neko, paid dowry. And he paid as recently as June 3rd, 2017. Yes, last year. Weeks to the general elections of 2017, which took place in August. So one can say she has been seriously married, or her marriages, both her marriages, have been serious. Yeah, because the first one produced three children, and the second one, dowry has been paid. Now, who is Dick Oruko Neko? Those who follow social media closely will know that this man from Luo Nyanza was a very staunch supporter of the Jubilee political party in the run-up to the August elections last year. Which is hardly surprising because Dick Oruko is the son of independence hero and one of the Kapinguria Six, a man called Aching Oneko, or rather Ramogi Aching Oneko. The Onekos have been very close family friends of the Kenyatas. Quite naturally, how do you forget somebody you are detained with yeah, in the fight for the independence of Kenya? But of course the two families, yeah, the relationship between the two families has been rocky, which is normal in uh, family relationships. Why do I say rocky? I say rocky yeah, because in 1969, Shortly after the fracas in Kisumu, Aching Oneko was detained yeah, by the first president of Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta. Under the laws in place then, yeah, where somebody could be detained without trial, Oneko was detained from 1969 to 1975. Yes, he was released when Jomo Kenyatta was still in power. And of course he was detained for siding with Jaramogi Oginga Odinga yeah, in the Kenya People's Union Party. Because after the fracas in Kisumu in 1969, all people associated with that political party were detained, including Jaramogi Oginga Odinga himself, who was put under house arrest. But that is politics, which is not supposed to be personal. So the two families have always been close for decades. That is the truth. Fascinatingly, a chain on Neko was the last surviving member of the Kapenguria Six, and he passed on at the ripe old age of 87 yeah, in 2007. And so, it's the son of this great Kenyan hero yeah, who is currently married to NYS suspect Lillian Omolo. From the background I've just given you, you will know that the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, 
and uh, the Oneko family have known each other for decades. Close family friends for decades. And this would also neatly explain the appointment in the first place of Lilian Omolo as PS in the Kenyan government, a very high-ranking official. Now, with that kind of information, and if you look back, the arrest of Lilian Omolo must have been a real shocker because surely she would be classified in the list of untouchables. Yeah, but clearly she was not and is not untouchable. And this forces even the skeptics to take a new look at the fight against corruption in Kenya. This would suggest that the fight against corruption <laughs> is in fact quite serious, much more serious than many Kenyans still think. Now it is also true yeah, that there are one or two characters, yeah, maybe more, who have still been left out yeah, of the corruption net. Extremely powerful and untouchable Kenyans. However, based on what we are discussing here, it is also true to say that other untouchables yeah, have also been netted in the fight against corruption and are currently in court. Of course, we have not seen any convictions yet, but already we can see that the cases have advanced and the evidence before the courts is strong. Okay, files have disappeared in one or two instances. <laughs> yeah, but still, so far, so good yeah, in the fight against corruption. And not only that, yeah, we have to admit, yeah, even those of us who are skeptics, that this fight against corruption led by State House yeah, has gone a long way in acting as a deterrent yeah, to new corruption deals. Even if one was untouchable, yeah, who in their right mind would get involved in a corrupt deal right now? In my view, very few, especially when people know that some of those who have already been touched yeah, are very well connected, almost untouchable, or were even thought to be untouchable before their arrests. Now, it is also true to say that the marriage link between Dick Oruko Oneko and NYS suspect Lilian Omolo has been kept secret. Serious efforts have been made to keep it out of the limelight, even before the NYS arrests took place. And now we know why. It is never a good idea to fully reveal where your connections and contacts are, or how powerful you really are when you're in public office, when you're in some of these positions. But there's also something else here. Yeah. This information we've discussed in this particular video will make it even of greater public interest to see the outcome of this particular ongoing case yeah, against NYS suspects, including Lilian Omoro. It is expected that this particular case will conclude mid next year, mid 2019. Meanwhile, Kenya waits with bated breath. Until next time, this is Chris Komekucha. Cartels in Kenya yeah, are so powerful. It is impossible for the government of Kenya to bring them down. And that is why the latest moves by the DEA in the United States is causing quite a lot of jitters back home here in Kenya. They were not, under any circumstances, going to lose their grip, yeah, their grip on power. But there's something else the cartels that started doing way back in 2007. Yeah, they started fielding candidates in uh, very prominent, powerful political positions so that their influence would remain guaranteed. And we're going to name those individuals shortly. 